Okay, everyone, welcome in. Good morning to all of you. Thanks for spending some time with us on this Monday morning uh, where we're gonna spend 30 minutes for a spotlight snippet discussing how to bring esports to your school. And we'll talk a little bit about the benefits of scholastic esports um, for grade schools and high schools. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the chat room. I'm being joined by Davis Turner, our Senior Director of Strategic Programs. And you may not be able to hear this, but if you have any audio issues, here's a little quick um, walkthrough slide. So we like to leave this up for a few seconds before we get started. And a couple of quick pointers. If we do any breakout rooms, please feel free to turn your camera on. Um, you will be automatically muted. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to use the chat room that's provided with Zoom. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to uh, Davis directly. So quick, a few little things about MSL Capita and MindSpark Learning. MSL Capita is a new program at MSL um, dedicated to pursuing community resilience through sport. And really the main focus for MSL Capita is that we exist at the apex of sports and education. So we upskill coaches and educators and we enable them to revolutionize the next generation of athletes. My name is Justin Goldman. I'm the Director of Athletic Partnerships here at MSL Capita. I'll be sure to provide my email address at the end of this snippet in case you want to reach out to me directly. If you have questions about esports, um, scholastic esports programs, or you'd just like to know more about some of our offerings. And MSL Capita is really focused on four main pillars. And we like to list these pillars here just so you kind of get an idea of where the discussion is going to be focused for all of our offerings, including this one today. So you can see that we really focus on social purpose. So inspiring athletes and organizations to take action and solve real world problems. We're always focused on workforce development. So bridging athletic development with professional development in order to better provide athletes with opportunities once they're you know, either retired or done playing the sport um, that they so much enjoy. The next thing that we focus on is the next gen athlete. So we really look at a lot of the new and emerging technology that's coming out related to player performance, both on the physical and the mental side as well. And then the human element, which really just emphasizes that social emotional learning concept, as well as empathy based learning. And we disrupt the culture of competitive sports by developing the human first and then the athlete. So all of these four pillars are really gonna be focused on during this snippet where we're talking about bringing esports to your school. One of the resources that we've already provided and hosted in the past was a 90 minute webinar focused on demystifying esports for parents, educators, and coaches. So in the chat room, you'll see a link to um, basically review this webinar. Um, you just type in your email address and then you'll be sent a link to view the whole recording. Um, it was a really great offering with some really great discussion focused on, again, just kind of eliminating the stigmas around scholastic esports and helping parents and educators and coaches understand a lot of the benefits of a scholastic esports program. So that's a great resource that you can get and download for free. Um, and Davis provided a link to that in the chat room. So since we only have 30 minutes with you guys, and these are you know, some of our shorter um, snippets, we call them for our online toolkit, we have two main objectives for the next 25 minutes or so. The first one is you know, discussing what the benefits are of esports and a lot of the great opportunities that they can provide students of all kinds and all minds. The second part is actually talking logistically about what it takes to bring esports to your school. We'll provide some resources and give you some really good, solid um, first steps that you can take in order to achieve that goal. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat room. So, part one is really looking at the opportunity that esports provides um, schools and sport organizations. And the first thing we really like to emphasize here at MSL Capita is that esports is for everyone, especially right now when we're dealing with a lot of students that are lacking um, that social purpose or they miss their teammates or they don't have the ability to play um, their traditional on-field or on-court sport. 
esports is great because it solves the large deficit of social interaction that kids desperate kids and students desperately need right now and it also engages your community virtually so you still find ways to come together you have those digital campfires you use a lot of those social platforms where everyone can come together and have a discussion or you know share in the joy of playing video games the other great thing about esports is that it meets students where they're at right now. If you look at some of the statistics that are emerging about esports and gaming in 2020 and beyond, the projections are outstanding. And if you look at Generation Z students, um, probably anywhere from 70 to 80 percent of those children are already activated in that space. They're already playing video games with their friends or have shown some kind of interest in competitive esports. And some of the feedback that we get from students that we talk to every single day, the most, the, one of the most important things that's emphasized is that they love just playing games with their friends online. And not only are they playing with their all, friends that they already have, but they're creating new friends at the same time. So their social circles are actually expanding. Um, and we also hear a lot about the competitive side. So again, a lot of athletes that are struggling with the lack of traditional team sports have found a space in esports, both at the scholastic and the competitive level. And they also realize that it's a great opportunity to build a very valid and um, relevant uh, professional career as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. So those are just some of the great benefits that esports provides um, as well. So another thing we wanted to talk about is this phrase known as every kind shines. And so every kind shines really just emphasizes that esports is for anyone and everyone. Um, it will help build school pride. It gives students a chance to excel in athletics, which has kind of been redefined to include esports. The other thing we love about esports at the scholastic level is that females are not segregated. They play on the same teams, they carry the same roles, they have the same amount of influence no matter what that esports title is or what your esports club looks like. So that sort of integration and that diversity is really, really important um, for schools and for sport organizations. And the other thing we really like to emphasize is that students that have different learning abilities can still achieve a high level of success in esports, both competitive, competitively and professionally. So if you look at a lot of the great careers that are emerging out of esports competitively and your more traditional gaming clubs, all of the different career opportunities will allow different learning ability students to have success and find opportunities. And that's really the main point of the first part of this snippet is the opportunity that exists through the pipeline of scholastic esports, collegiate esports, and then going into the professional realm is that this rise, rise in convergence which is the meshing of traditional sports and esports cultures is breeding that opportunity for young leaders and for young entrepreneurs to learn relevant soft and hard skills, the, the skills that really matter in industry today. So they have a chance to have that positive social purpose and impact while also making a real difference in the community and creating more diversity in sports. And that just brings us all together. So that is one of the great things about Scholastic Esports is that you're opening the doors for students to go off and have a very relevant impact in their communities while also improving their own lives um, for many years to come. And just to give you an example of a lot of the careers that are available through Esports, we love to share this resource from NACEF. And NACEF is the North American Scholastic Esports Federation. So they have a lot of great resources on their website. And they share this graphic that shows just some of the great emerging professional careers that exist, whether it has to do with developing software for future esports titles. Um, you go into broadcasting actual esports events, um, actually doing anything from audio engineering to visual graphic packages for a lot of the broadcasts that take place in esports. If you're more on the entrepreneur side and you're looking to build your own esports organization or develop your own website that aggregates esports content, um, if you're more on the business and marketing side, there's corporate sponsorship opportunities, um, there's athletic partnership opportunities similar to the role that I carry here at MindSpark Learning. There's everything from being a coach to a general manager to um, crafting theories and ideas for new games as well. So 
it becomes very limitless when you start to look at the branches of esports opportunities in terms of careers. And what's great about a scholastic esports program is that you can generate a lot of interest from a lot of different types of students in these different career paths and really inspire kids to become the best version of themselves through that scholastic esports program. The other concept that we really like to share when it comes to, you know, this um, evolution of the esports ecosystem is this concept of convergence. So when esports and traditional sports start to blend together with industry and education, like we're talking about right now at the scholastic level, it really does create that vehicle for learning and workforce development. So the students are already passionate about video games and gaming culture. They come into an environment where a school has a structured, you know, esports club or an esports team. And then through that esports program that you've created at your school, they're learning again, those soft and hard skills that are relevant to a lot of industry partners and a lot of organizations right now today. And so with those opportunities, not only can they possibly get a college scholarship for esports, which is also on the rise, but there are a lot of new young up and coming industry organizations involved in esports that are looking for, you know, young entrepreneurs and kids that have these skills and are motivated to make an impact again in their community or in the esports industry. And so you start to see these two sides lean on each other. And that's something that we've been really um, passionate about learning and, and discovering here at MindSpark Learning as well is how we're seeing professional sports really lean on esports in areas like social media, technology, player influence, brand development, um, using all the new networks that exist, whether it's TikTok or Discord, some of these other social media platforms that are really popular in the esports space, and vice versa. There's a lot of things that esports organizations can learn from traditional sports organizations when it comes to player development, coaching, scouting, um, teamwork and collaboration and building that infrastructure that allows the student or the young esports athlete to, again, develop holistically and not only become a great gamer um, or a master at their title of choice, but also understand the benefits and value of nutrition, sleep, mindfulness, meditation, all the other things that you see traditional professional athletes uh, truly master as they become the best version of themselves. You know, esports organizations are leaning heavily on pro sports organizations to help create that infrastructure and that um, holistic development environment. So as the two start to lean on each other more and more, it is having a positive impact on the esports industry and the traditional esports industry. And again, at the same time, that's opening up a lot of great avenues in the scholastic realm as well. Uh, we also think that esports is a great opportunity to teach what we call digital sportsmanship. So very similar to digital citizenship, Scholastic Esports is a great way to teach a lot of these key elements that apply to all people in all realms. And we're talking about physical fitness and just good teamwork and um, leadership abilities as well. So Scholastic Esports becomes this great platform where you can teach students how to handle online competition, um, how to manage bullying, how to you know, act when it comes to safety and privacy concerns, and then other social emotional learning concepts as well. Um, in, the same, in the same light, it's also a great way to help build fitness routines, um, integrate some mindfulness habits. And then again, like I said earlier, those team leadership and performance-based skills um, are being developed day in and day out uh, through the routines and the habits that they create through the esports program that you've, that you've designed. Uh, so part two, shifting gears, we wanted to spend about 10 or 15 minutes talking about how you can get started. So if you work for a sports organization or a grade school or a high school and you understand the benefits of esports and what it can bring to your school or your community, you know, what are those first steps? Where can you go to kind of get the information that you need to get a, to get a club started? So I just wanted to share this video from Play Versus. Play Versus is an awesome resource um, that helps schools get their esports club started.
We ready? Let's go. All right, guys, same team comp as yesterday. Matt, I want to see you play more aggressive. Yep. And we're running a carry top again. Got it? Oh, no. Oh, well, yeah. We got this. Zach, are you good to support again? The dawn has arrived. Yeah, of course. Support is so easy, dude. I need support at bottom. Block, Block for me. Block for me. I got only five. On my way, guys. I'm coming in. I can one be one of the stacks. <laughs> I'll come help push mid. I want to die bot in 20 seconds. Can you guys back me up? That's what I'm talking about, guys. Good stuff. We can end! We can end! Right. Yeah, let's go! Let's go! Oh, man, that was so fun. I wish we had this in school. Okay, so that's just one video we love to share because it shows not only the diversity and the inclusiveness and the communication um, and a lot of the uh, tech literacy skills that are required to you know, participate in an esports club, but it also just shows you how many awesome resources are actually out there to help you, you know, form the club and take the steps that you need. And Play Versus is just one of very, very many resources out there that are kind of focused on the scholastic um, the scholastic side of, you know, creating an esports club and they provide you with a lot of great tools as well. Um, but we like to really help schools get started by having them just take a simple school, you know, school wide survey. And it's amazing because a lot of educators come to us and they say, well, is this something that students are really interested in? Like, where do we, how do we even know if this is something that they would want to do? And again, if you look at the statistics and the rise in the popularity of esports and gaming clubs, um, odds are very, very high, probably 75 to 80% that there are already a great group of students in your school that are passionate about wanting to start a scholastic club. So again, if you take that school wide survey and you find that you've already got 20, 25, you know, maybe even more students that are interested in getting involved. Uh, it's a great way to promote student agency and give them the opportunity to come together and host those informal meetings and discuss what type of club or what type of program would make the most sense for your community and your school. So just starting with that informal survey can be a great way to um, plant the seeds. And then the next thing you know, you've got faculty members and students that are ready to go and have been waiting for something like this for quite some time. So that's always a great way to start. And then from there, again, we like to preach just being able to lean on a lot of the great free resources that are out there. Um, esports is extremely expansive and especially in today's world of, you know, we're in the YouTube generation where you can go online and find information on just about anything that definitely includes scholastic esports organizations, but we've listed some great organizations that we've leaned on in the past and that we feel are very knowledgeable and very um, well known in the sense that the curriculum and the resources that they provide are very standardized and very straightforward and easy to understand. So NACEF being one of them, I know Davis already shared um, the link to NACEF in the chat room. Varsity Esports, the Varsity Esports Foundation is another terrific resource where they provide a lot of free guides on how to get started and how to build an esports club for your school. The aforementioned Play Versus, that's more for your competitive high school esports clubs. Um, but again, they have a lot of great resources as well. And then the High School Esports League, you can see their logo in the bottom right. That's another great resource um, where it's very easy to navigate through their website and find some great toolkits and some great information. And of course, after this session, um, you will receive some more information from us as well 
Um, and then, like I said earlier, Davis has provided a link um, to, to the, previous, uh, the previous spotlight that we held um, that demystified a lot of the e concerns around Scholastic Esports. So tons of great resources out there for you to lean on if you're looking to get started. We also wanted to provide a really simple blueprint in terms of how your high school esports program can be created um, and molded. And so there's two really kind of main ways that you can go with this or two kind of directions that you can take. The first being more of a competitive um, esports club that actually competes in you know, high school esports tournaments um, and leagues. And then there's the more, uh, more, I would say casual club that is more focused on just gaming as a whole and the learning component as well and creating those professional pathways. So it really does depend on your student body base. Um, and there's also ways where you can blend both together. You can have a competitive esports club that also focuses on a lot of the learning components and a lot of the you know, STEM-based curriculum as well. Both can coexist harmoniously. Um, it's really up to you how you want to you know, develop this program. And so you can see here this really basic blueprint that we've provided. Um, the competitive esports program is definitely going to be a little bit more focused on helping those students create those NCAA scholarship opportunities um, for different uh, esports titles, and then as well as the entrepreneurial side. So looking at how these students can get involved with a professional esports organization in a myriad of different roles. And then on the more casual side, you're looking at, again, STEM curriculum, engaging students, engaging different types of learners, and then really incorporating learning design into those components. So maybe you're using, you know, Minecraft education, that platform to help students learn um, a lot of different STEM-based um, skills as well. So those are kind of the two main um, pathways that you can take for Scholastic, you know, Scholastic school program. Uh, but at the same time, you can blend both together. And then we always think it's really important too to go out and find a local club advisor. So someone who has a uh, background in IT and understands a lot of the technical components that are needed to be able to um, host and manage an esports club and someone who can work with you inside and outside of school to again, oversee some of the club meetings or help draft a club constitution, um, which just includes your standard rules of practice and you know all the different things that you need to incorporate so that students understand you know what is allowed and what is not allowed and that's one of the most important steps to take when building a club is just making sure that those rules and regulations are very straightforward and clear so you go look at any legitimate scholastic esports club they're all going to have um standard you know words or standard information on no bullying no toxicity um, those privacy concerns and things like that. So it's not accepted, which is really important. And most esports clubs embrace diversity and inclusiveness. Um, that's part of what makes esports so great. And so just making sure that all of those things are included, you know, in your club con constitution is really important. And again, if you lean on any of the resources that we provided, um, they will all have those components included. And so there's some great templates that you can pull from. Um, and then kind of as we start to close up here, this quick little snippet, we wanted to focus on a great opportunity that we're actually providing right now. Um, there's still a few days left for you to submit an application for our first ever CoLab Esports Fellowship. So this is an intense six month professional develop, development program opportunity. And it's all 100% virtual and it's also 100% free. So we are looking for passionate educators, coaches, anyone involved with a school or, or a sport organization that wants to bring esports to their organization or their community, this opportunity is available. Again, like I said, it's a six month virtual course where we meet monthly and we provide professional development and we upskill the educators or the fellows involved um, to gain the confidence that they need to go to their school and actually get an esports program off the ground or to advance and enhance the program that you may have that already exists. And so we bring in industry experts. Um, we have great discussions around certain problems of practices or challenges that you might be facing 
to taking your esports club or program to the next level. And at the end of that six month program, every fellow will walk away with a $500 stipend from MindSpark Learning to again, enhance the program that already exists or help you get your foot in the door with a Scholastic Esports program um, at your organization. So it's a great opportunity. Davis shared, I think the link to this in the chat room. We are still accepting applications for the next day or two days, I believe. Um, and I see some chat going on. Sarah, you're pushing this in Northern Colorado. Yeah, educators are definitely overwhelmed right now, but the great thing is that it is 100% virtual. So um, if it doesn't work now, we hope to you know, possibly provide these kind of opportunities in the future, but we appreciate the fact that you're you know, promoting this uh, in Northern Colorado. I'm a CSU alum, so all about uh, Northern Colorado. I see the thumbs up there. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So that's a great oh, opportunity. Go Rams, there we go. So that's a great opportunity for anyone here joining us um, or viewing this on demand. Again, check it out. It's a great opportunity. We're really excited for it. Um, I think it's gonna be great and we're all gonna be able to learn from each other and again, help solve those problems of practice and help you overcome whatever challenges you're facing to you know, promoting esports in your school or getting your club started. So real quickly, as we wrap up here, um, if you could just take a few minutes to complete a short survey, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, it just helps us as we continue to build the MSL Capita program and future offerings. Any feedback that you can provide is greatly appreciated. Um, yes, Sarah, the fellowship is nationwide. So we've had some great applications already from people all over the world, not even just in the United States, but countries like Trinidad and Tobago as well. So really, really cool opportunity. And again, bringing in different voices and different fellows from different parts of the country, doing different things in esports um, allows us all to learn from each other. And so it's going to be a great learning environment and professional development opportunity starting, I believe, September 24th. So coming up pretty quickly here in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll be launching with our first two-day event for the collab, um, the esports fellowship. And then November 11th, we will have a clinic focusing on sustainability in sport, a very important topic right now um, with the nature that the world is in. Uh, sustainability in sport is extremely important for all organizations, not just at the professional level, but all the way down to the youth and grassroots level as well. And then in December, our offering on the 10th is social emotional learning and development in sport. Again, another important concept um, and component to athletic development and uh, organizational development as well. So that's all we got for you. This snippet absolutely flew by. We're used to having an hour or maybe even an hour and a half to discuss these topics, but I appreciate everyone joining us. Again, Davis shared a lot of the great links in the chat room. And if you missed any portion of this snippet, you will receive a full recording afterwards, um, usually within a day or two. So Thank you so much for joining us. I'll stick around for a minute or two just in case anyone has any questions and we will see you next time.